Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my series Cataloging Catalogs, which I can admit has been on a bit of a unintended hiatus. And so I'm happy to share Montgomery Ward's Spring and Summer 1947 with you all today. And we begin with this black and white rayon crepe number here on the front with a matching covered buckle belt and then a uh, all-in-one sleeve here over a large shoulder pad we can see. Looks like this is a crossover faux wrap here, but we'll read more about the details once we get inside. And inside we have our number from the cover, although this time paired with a elbow length glove to match and a lovely hat that matches. And then of course the matching shoes, matchy matchy, pulling a color from the print and then using that for the accessories, which is what they're doing for all of these lovely numbers here. We also have this very simple dress. This is just a gathered skirt, just a rectangle on an all-in-one sleeve dress. It looks like there is some gathering up here maybe in this shoulder with some button details. Again, this is an all-in-one sleeve, but this shoulder is 90 degrees from the neckline. So there is a quite hefty shoulder pad in here that is holding that up. So that's been added in during the pattern drafting. Then we have a again matching glove belt and shoe with that. Over here, I think this is actually an all-in-one sleeve. However, some of the dart fullness is used in a tuck right along the edge here. So down here, there's no seam in the underarm, but it does look like almost there's a seam up here and that's just because this is tucked over. It looks like most of the dart fullness is being used as a tuck here or up into the um, some tucks or gathering here along the shoulder line. Uh, this almost looks like more fullness than would be needed to fit this because of course some of the fullness is used in opening up this this into an all-in-one sleeve. So this might be extended and uh, added fullness being additionally used along the shoulder line here and along the tip of the shoulder where again there is a nice size shoulder pad in there. No surprise. Again that's helping to define the waist in addition to this peplum that's also um, helping to define the waist. This is quite a gathered peplum here and then the skirt does flare just a tiny bit. I wouldn't say this is a full A-line uh, or at least a full A-line would look fuller on me. Because the amount of dart fullness I have at my waistline for my particular pattern, when I close those darts, the A-line does open up quite wide. Whereas somebody who has a less uh, stark waist to hip ratio differential, the skirt won't flare as much when you tip those darts. So, And we do have coordinating, if not completely matching accessories this time. Again, distributing the darker tone throughout the look. Again, pulling these colors from the print itself, which is a gorgeous fabric. As usual, I will have scanned all of the fashion pages, especially the ones that we look at today and also the pages in between that I may not have something to say about or that just might be too many pages to talk about everything. I'll have everything linked below on a Pinterest board so you can go ahead and peruse these at your leisure and read all the descriptions and find out exactly what's going on with all the details that you enjoy. And then we do have our rather 1980s appropriate looking Carol Brent casuals here with wide important shoulders and a tapered look at the waist. Once again, using this wide shoulder, as I always say, to help with the hourglass illusion. And truly, does this dress, I mean, all three of these, I think would be fine in like 1984. <laughs> I feel like you could really get away with these. The only difference is what style of shoe and hair and makeup we're pairing with these things really. And we can see we have basically what is an all-in-one sleeve here. This is actually being uh, created with a seam line. There's a princess seam line running through here. And then these are additional layers capping off of that. But we have an all-in-one sleeve kind of shape here. Again, there's going to be a hidden shoulder pad in all of these. You can see where her arm is, is in here somewhere. And this sticks out quite a lot from there. This is a set in sleeve that's again, following the same silhouette as the all-in-one. Might as well put an all-in-one here, especially if you're trying to, have, like usually the reason you would do a set in cap sleeve as opposed to an all in one sleeve is to avoid the like, draping that can happen in this area. But this actually has tucks in the shoulder line creating little drapes there. So might as well just do an all in one and avoid having to sew an extra seam line there. But that's all right. That's just, that's just me, you know. And this again is a set in sleeve on this side, a uh, slightly dropped waist here with gathering. And then of course this buttons on either side here. I'm assuming these are not closures because they are not aligned. Uh, you can see on C here, talon zipper placket. So it has a zipper in here somewhere. These do come in turquoise as shown, gray or coral, dry clean. Sorry if this is a little bit blown out. I'm trying to keep things bright, but the scans, of course, will be even better quality. And again, please note the matchy-matchy accessories that are going on here, as I always like to emphasize, just because it is something that helps lend an authentic look if that's something you're going for. So both of these first two ensembles have the matching exact color pink elbow length glove with these, and then black shoes, black hat, black accents. Over here we have a similar effect just with the black glove as well. And note that these are all elbow length gloves for daytime. They do seem like more of an evening thing now, but an elbow length glove was perfectly acceptable during the day, as we can see. And these are conversational prints because this one has little fish swimming in some like seagrass going on here. And then we have some weather vane roosters on this sign with this lovely 
flame detailing up here at the neckline. Again, not a terribly uh, difficult pattern drafting project. This is an all-in-one sleeve. It's actually a softer one. The shoulder line here is much so softer even compared to this dress. Um, and there doesn't seem to be anything additional going on that dart might be in the shoulder here. I'll have to look closely. Um, this belt is very cute, but again, not a pattern drafting problem. Just a cute little arrow added on here to tie into our weather vane theming. And then this has an additional drape on top of the skirt that's tucked here at the waist. The difficulty in a dress like this would be this applique or inset up here at the neckline. That would be very fine work to do. And these shoes do remind me of the black suede pumps that Remix does have available. They're a little bit lower heel probably than the Remix one. This looks almost more like the heel on the um, Maryland pump over at American Duchess. So both good options for a standard pump for this era. Again, you'll see later we do have flats available in this era, but you can see for these like finer quality rayon crepe dresses in the beginning of the catalog here, our standouts here at the start of the catalog, they are pairing those with heels. And though available actually in two different rayons, they're exactly the same price. So uh, the camellia is a rayon crepe, probably more of a opaque, and then the moth wing fine printed member ground sheer, it's a bit more sheer. So it just depends on if you wanted a fully opaque dress or something a little bit sheerer, of course, you'll be wearing a slip and potentially several other layers underneath something like this. So you weren't necessarily worried about modesty, just how fine you wanted your fabric. And we have some outfits here that would be perfect for brunch nowadays. We have crown soap and water rayon broadcloth, must be washable. And again, we see this all-in-one sleeve, which is rather ubiquitous for my favorite time period, 45 through 55. We have a lot of the all-in-one sleeve. And we can see where the remaining dart fullness has gone in all of these dresses. This one has tucks up into the shoulder. This here seems to have gathering along the side, which has helped creating this look here. And then uh, on this dress, we again have gathering into the waistline and a peplum as well here. This one does open along these buttons along the front. Again, a good non, uh, a zipper free project for those of you who still hate zippers. It's always a nerve wracking part of any project, although making this many buttonholes is also nerve wracking. And three more lovely dresses over here. Again, we can see where our dart fullness has gone. This is still an all in one sleeve. It just has a ruffled trim in self fabric applied along the edge. And the rest of our gathering has been put up into shoulder gathers this time. So shoulder gathers here, uh, waist gathers here, side gathers here, uh, shoulder tucks over here. How to use the rest of our dart fullness. I actually had a question recently that was, where are the darts on a 1950s dress? And as we can see here in 19, the late 1940s, the darts can be anywhere. Uh, as usual, there's not one spot that the darts hang out. The dart fullness is used in many different ways and is uh, any radiated anywhere around the bust. Again, watch my darts video to see all the different options for where, what you can do with dart fullness, where you can put that. It's just there to help create the cone of the front of the bodice to fit around the bust. Um, the dart fullness is not rigid. Although the amount of dart fullness each person needs uh, is rather strict. You always need the same amount to create the same cone for your bust, um, the way you can use it and way you can distribute it can be done in thousands of ways. And we have some new silhouettes in soft wool suits here, but you can see how long these jackets are. Here in the late forties, we still have quite long jackets. Um, so these are, you know, full, fully covering the hip, this line here, um, which does not necessarily make the legs look very long because you're cutting the body into these different shapes. It almost, you can see how this here, um, her legs look longer because the waistline or the uh, jacket line is higher. But again, we do have our strong shoulders on all of these, a little bit more rounded, but still quite strong. And then again, the peplum is helping to create that hourglass on these. We have a simple shirt dress here. This actually has buttons from the waist down. They, that doesn't look like a button placket. I think those are buttonholes and buttons made simply for decoration. But above we do have a single large button, which is something you do see from the thirties through the fifties, really. Uh, sometimes you'll just see one large button, which is great for when you find one lonesome cool button at the antique mall. And again, we do have the all in one sleeve with the shoulder tuck here, contributing to the fit on this buddy. And there are, is a pocket here actually set angled along the hip as well. And again, we see two large buttons on this second dress. And this time you can see the difference between having an all-in-one sleeve and a set-in sleeve. And this is a set-in sleeve here as well. This is similar to the little cotton suits that I make, although again, this does veer like 80s, early 90s very easily, so do be careful. And we have a lot more going on with excess fabric here. We have the pleats and the shoulder plates going on here. This still has a little bit of gathering left in the waistline as well. Delicate, delicate, sheer applique work done at the neckline, and then these tucks all down the bodice with a pleated peplum as well, again, to helping with this illusion. We have inset fine lace work on this option here. Again, a set in sleeve here, tucks into the shoulder, tucks at the waist it looks like almost as well. And then that uh, shoulder kind of flutters off over the shoulder pad. And then we have all this going on 
on the skirt. This is actually a skirt with a little yoke here, and then these are separate panels that are pleated down. I don't know if they're sewn into the side seam, hard to say at this angle. They might continue on to the back and there might be a seam, um, but these are actually not attached to the lower underskirt area. It looks like they float on top of that just because it's the same fabric. It all kind of blends in. And it's not like I have a tech sketch for this, but I'm assuming the easiest way to do this would be as separate panels that are completely lined and then kind of sewn into this yoke and float above the rest of the dress. On this side, we do have a dropped waist here with some double-ended darts that release below the bust into a tuck. And it's got shearing along this waistline that releases into these gathers here on the skirt. But the rest of the dart fullness, there's some still being used here through the middle, obviously, to help fit this entire section. But some of it has been put up into the neckline. In fact, this is probably additional fullness. We also have a raglan seam here. This is an all-in-one sleeve with a raglan uh, cut into it. It's much easier to just do an all-in-one raglan than it is to do a set-in-sleeve raglan. So one day I'll get to it, but it's just kind of extra steps and annoying to do a set and sleeve raglan but with an all-in-one all you have to do is draw the, the line that you want and separate it and you can color block like this or texture block rather because it seems to be a like smoother ray on here with an eyelet of course for the sleeves this junior's print is particularly exciting a hunting scene dashing new print for juniors a flattering dress with its smoothly molded lines stand-up pleated ruffle circles around the neck Accent keyhole, tie neckline, and sloped shoulder. Snug fitting bodice flares out in a pert ruffle edged from peplum. Tie back belt, full skirt, zipper placket, two inch taped hem, dry clean. Pastel pink as shown, aqua or white grounds. And again, offered in both the opaque crepe and slightly sheer moth wing rayon. And over here, our junior date dresses feature a tiny waist. I actually have done a video showing how to do this waist shaped piece for, I think it was a McCall's or maybe a Butterick, I can't remember design. Uh, I actually showed how I went ahead and made that dress, which you could use that same sort of technique to make something like this that just has a gathered skirt instead. And also the all-in-one sleeve and gathering both at the shoulder and the bust for this probably added extra gathering in. This might be a good dress to do a tutorial on how to make the pattern for this. It's not something I personally would wear because I don't love a ton of gathering on my body, my, my shape myself. But if any of you would like to see how this would be done, let me know and more and more dresses, especially again, shirt dresses, which are so common. I have done a video on how to add this like shirt front to a dress bodice. It's the same as you would for adding it to a shirt. Honestly, it's not any different. Again, I don't particularly wear shirt dresses myself, but if you would like to know how, I can put a card up to a video on how to do that here, especially because the video I did actually has an all-in-one sleeve as well, just like this one, so. But my favorite from these is going to be this dress because that fabric is so pretty. And we can see how long this short sleeve is here. It's kind of the opposite effect, like this sleeve tipping up here, this is, uh, I think an all-in-one sleeve, yeah. Uh, tipping up helps again create that hourglass. And here it's creating a much more boxier shape by having this set in sleeve and having it be so long. If you had the hem more like this, or even just higher, it would create a different illusion. And we found more color here. We have Galen Lord's Town Ginghams with the belted in look to make your waist small. Again, we can see the new look really coming in strong at this point. But again, with our matching accessories, white hats, white belt, white gloves, white shoes. I'm assuming a white handbag as well, if they weren't just modeling and had anywhere to actually go. A town dress in a new Galian Lord gingham, color woven with white in a pinpoint design, made of fine combed yarn, dressmaker style bodice, has a soft bow accent at the V-neckline, buttons to waist, fly front opening. So this has buttons to the waist and then this is left open, but because it's just overlapped and has a placket underneath, and you're probably wearing a slip. It's not like really a concern, um, but it doesn't seem like they have a zipper in there in any way. Buttons to waist, fly front opening a skirt that's full with shearing on each side, two concealed hip pockets hidden in that gathering, jade green as shown, light mist gray or candy pink. Though if I'm going to be stuck with a gathered skirt and pockets, which are not my usual jam anyhow, I like these triangular pockets over here. Very fun. Also, I would like the large brim sailor out of imported rough synthetic straw braid, grow grain ribbon trim, white or black, $10. I'll take one of each. And we have some more cotton dresses for daytime here. Again, more stripes. Again, set on different types of bias to make things go funky ways. And then we have plenty of eyelet as well. I do love a like white cotton eyelet with black accessories in the summertime. It's so like, you know, easy to throw in the washing machine feels breezy and bright when it is just too hot outside. But so many of these are very similar silhouettes and just really elevated by the amount of detail they're putting in. For example, on this dress, this neckline applique and these little peaked pocket details, 
super fun additions on what is otherwise a rather simple dress. This time with a set in sleeve, but again, see how the difference of having that be a shorter sleeve with a bit of a tilt to it helps with the silhouette here as opposed to having that be that blocky sleeve like we saw earlier. And we have our two heaviest hitters for prints in the early half of the 20th century, polka dots and gingham. Can't go wrong with either here in the mid 40s. We have some interesting things going on with trim here in these juniors dresses. Uh, I mean, a lot of ruffles, but also just uh, this is interesting. Although I do love the shoes. Over here, we do have the ruffled eyelet trim on the yoke, which again is a simple enough addition to make. Again, this here, they've just sewn this on uh, to this side of the gourd skirt. So there's a, a seam line here. They've sewn the trim on and that just gets sewn in as you're putting the dress together. This, of course, being the favorite from these pages because you look like a pirate in the best way. A gathered puff sleeve, a gathering at the shoulder and the cuff of that. Very slim piping holding that into place, as well as the neckline. Then we have gathering at the waist and above as well, and then a gathered skirt. This is like a faux corset kind of look. And then again, notice the hemlines on these are quite short, a little bit shorter for uh, our juniors here, I think. But then on our hottest of days here, we do have our smart cotton casual summer sunbacks here. We have dresses that don't have sleeves at all. Look at that. And we have so many shirt dresses, very, very ubiquitous day wear, um, even housewear for women at this time period. But again, it just feels a bit domestic to me, a bit better for running errands and being around the house. Whereas of course, I prefer the sophisticated in-town garments, personally. Apparently I'm a city girl when it comes to fashion. But lots of fun prints as well. Again, I will have all these pages scanned for you to browse. And speaking of lounging around the house, instead of a house dress, I think I prefer a house coat. As you know, if you've been here on the channel for a while, but these large floral house coats are just delicious. I'd wear them lounging around the house or here at the blue patterning table of doom anytime. And now we get into some lovely suiting again with our strong shoulder on all of these and that longer hip line. You can still see how short these skirts are. They will drop down a little bit further as we move into the early 50s later on. You can see this has a four button stance, a single button stance, three. You can have all kinds of things going on here with collar, without. But all of these are gourd skirts with a center front box pleat. So that at least is the same. And goodness knows I'll take the three pieces because they are near impossible to find now and very expensive if you can find them. So to be fair, at the time, the three-piece ensemble was $49.75 for these, which would be this price, probably equivalent to what you'd have to pay, honestly, if you could find one vintage. That wasn't moth-eaten half to death, anyhow. Now check out the detailing on this sleeve of this suit. High fashion in dress suits. Sleeve interest plays the dominant role in this softly tailored 100% virgin wool worsted twill suit. One of Ward's finest presentations. See editorial at left. Intricate Rococo detail Spiced with sparkling nail heads, ornaments the billowy shirtwaist sleeves. Rayon lined jacket is styled with a classic convertible collar and topped with novelty button. Keynote to the distinctive designing modified raglan yoke. Cleverly detailed pocket flaps, waist nipping darts to enhance the sculptural slimness and an all around self fabric leather backed belt. Talon zipper, black, gray, beige, or light green. So it comes in black with all that detailing on the sleeves? I'll take it. And that is at $50 even which translates to this nowadays. Here we can see some of the different coat shapes and we can see also that they are a good eight inches above the hem of the skirts. So uh, I prefer normally to have the coat match the hem of the skirt, but hovering above is clearly very acceptable here in the mid 1940s. Lovely giant bishop sleeve on this one with a, a princess into raglan with lovely trimming going on here. Delicious. Again, a good use for a single nice button on this coat here. I think I do prefer actually this swing coat with a big bishop kind of lantern almost looking sleeve and this fun almost quilted detailing. And we do have some rather fun tops for summertime here, including this off the shoulder with straps and ruffle number here. And this one down here in the bottom left has a butterfly print, which is quite fun. And at last we come to the main event, the hats. Although these are not particularly the good ones, but when they're good, they come in like seven colors and I definitely want one of each. All right, let's see what we've got. Here in the hats, we usually have the divine and the ridiculous, which is most lovely, or the ridiculously divine, or the divinely ridiculous. 
like F here with its curled felt, I'm assuming feathers around the rim of this tilted topper. Delicious. Novel feather effect of felt ornaments completely encircling the crown. Covered wire ring for secure fit. Black, navy, medium blue, gray, red, gold, beige, lime green, or white. Then we have B, which is just a small fake bouquet on your head. Transparent synthetic hair braid decoratively shaped into loops for a pom-pom effect. Colorful flowers and ribbon bow loops. Covered wire ring for secure fit. Black, pink, white, navy, blue, medium blue, or toast tan. I do have a video where I made some rather ridiculous 1940s inspired tilted toppers here on the uh, channel, so I can link you up to that in a card if you'd like to see me make some more uh, of the ridiculous style hats. But for something a little bit more classic and chic, we can go with N here, which let's see how many colors that comes in. Grow grain, band, and bow, black, navy, pink, or white, each with a matching ribbon, lime green or toast tan with a brown ribbon, medium blue with navy. As usual, I'll take one of each. And to talk about ridiculous hats, you want to tell me that that's not a shower loofah? Practically. I do have one hat like this in my collection that is more shower loofah looking than hat looking. It looks like some sort of dried sea sponge in the best possible way. Although the ruffles on F here are quite fun. She's wearing a book chain necklace, it almost, almost looks like. All black, black or navy, each with white edging, red with navy, toast tan with brown, and white with black. And again, we have some more hats that are just a bit like you've thrown a bundle of trim on your head. Love that. Uh, this one's got some absolutely ridiculous flowers made of feathers around each. You here is just flowers with ribbon on your head. Excellent. Truly, 30s and 40s hats are just the best. Now these are Beauty Plus Design and Matrons Designs. That's for the more matronly crowd, AKA more 30s-ish hats, because that's what these gals were used to. And I love them, especially K. Ooh, baby, I'll take it. Black, navy, white, or medium blue with white flowers, beige with eggshell. Yes, thank you. And truly, so many of these are just divine. Then we come to our fabric pages, which again, I will scan for you if you'd like to read the details of what fabrics were available at this time. Of course, not all that is in color here, sadly enough. Try and get to some pages. There we go. With colors and prints. This looks like flowers coming out of hat boxes, which is most excellent. Again, I like to note here in the latter half of the 1940s, uh, while we still have our smaller uh, size floral prints, we are getting our larger prints here in as well. Again, earlier in the era tends to have smaller floral prints or smaller uh, scale prints. Later in the decade, you do see more larger scale prints. So take that as a general trend, not like a set rule or anything. We do have some Parisian prints here, which are quite fun. Number 16 and 20 here. Scenic printed silks, an exceptional value in fine, pure dye silk prints. Also, I like this page, colorful plastic film for many uses. Nothing more exciting than plastic, am I right? We can see our very cute selection of belts here. Again, easier to find 80s versions of these buddies. So kind of study the 40s versions and then keep your eye out on eBay or Etsy. You can sometimes find 80s versions that are in much better condition for less of a price that are very similar in style to 1940s versions of these belts. And more of my favorites, aka accessories, aka handbags, in this case in lovely colors, including boxy-ish bags in vinyl here. We know how I love a box bag. But not nearly as much as I love a plastic flex. So here on M, let's see what they have to say. Jet black plastic squares, underarm style, squares fastened by half hidden lacing, zipper top, roomy, about 12 and a half inches by seven and a fourth, black or white. They also have one that is about an inch smaller. So if you would like the 11 by six inch instead, that comes in black, red or white, which one of each. Very fun. I've actually never seen this tile design in an extant purse. So it would be fun to see one sometime. But honestly, in the black shiny plastics here, I'll take one of everything. I quite like A here. Delicious. In this season's newest silhouettes, I'll take them. But don't worry, that's not all the plastic flex we have. We also have N here. What's going on there? Underarm style with zipper top closing goes with tailored or dressy costumes. Roomy, lined and lightweight in white quilted plastic. Whatever the heck that means, I'll take it. Also look at the Lucite clasp on V up here. So fun. 
handsome tortoiseshell frame simulated gives an expensive look to this dressy calf grained plastic pouch double handles roomy lined in white plastic for three dollars and 58 cents and our uh n here was two dollars and 38 cents which it would cost you more now that's for sure now what's very interesting about f here which is very similar to the white handbag we saw earlier is that i own a very similar handbag Durable yet flexible, its handy size makes it ideal for sportswear. Plastic is long wearing and easy to clean. Underarm style with zipper top clothing lined. See pages 212 through 217 for other handbag selections. About 11 and a half by six inches. Multicolor only $3.58. I did not pay $3 for mine. But we can see a variety of summer flat-ish styles. These are nearly flats. They have small wedges on these. Probably more comfortable than a truly flat shoe would be. And again, more casual styles here. We got our kind of what to today look to us almost like an orthopedic sandal. So you can really get away with some quite comfortable shoes. But we all know I prefer pain and therefore the shoes on these pages instead because, whew, baby, tiny peep toe on this glossy black strappy heel here. I'll take it. Neither American Duchess nor Remix Vintage Shoes have patent leather shoes. So they need to get on that for me. But we do have our basic ballet flats and loafer styles here as well. Again, can wear a flat shoe, no problem there. Now I know what all of you want, and it's this, because you want to be able to send your order in, and so do I, but sadly, um, even the, the envelope has been lost to time, and so has all the stock, sadly. But of course, like every Wards catalog, we have everything from auto parts to house siding, tires, sunglasses, staplers, books, records, furniture, fabrics, etc. going on here, silverware. Everything is available here from Wards, except for not anymore. So that was a quick flip through of Montgomery Wards, spring and summer 1947. Again, all of the fashion pages, fabric pages, and most of the accessories will be scanned in and available over on my Pinterest for you to browse at your own pace and at your own leisure. Study those style details so you can replicate these fashions for yourself if you would like to. And do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more cataloging catalog videos in the future. I haven't done one for quite a while now, but I can put more on the schedule if you'd like to see them. But in any case, thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.